We continue our reading of God's Dream for You, The Chosen, a morning devotional by author Dwight K. Nelson. And our reading today, September 6, Prime Time, Part 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Acts 2, verse 1 and 2. What if, while we are on our knees in church this Sabbath, we hear, as if in the distance, the low decibel moaning of a faraway wind, our eyes still closed in prayer. We can hear it distinctly now, a crescendoing, windy moaning and groaning. Suddenly, whatever it is becomes the rumble of an approaching freight train. In the Midwest, we've been taught to recognize that as the audible warning of a tornado. But before we can react, the howling wind seems to explode into our sanctuary. But the light fixtures that you'd expect to be blowing at a crazy angle hang limp and motionless. No wind, no movement of air, just the roar of a furious tornado inside the church. That's when we see it, suspended in midair halfway up to the ceiling, a rolling orange ball of fire like a cauldron of seething melted steel without an iron pot to contain it, liquid fire suspended in midair. Then, as if by invisible hands, thin strips of flame peel away from the fiery ball and dart, through the air, up and down, every aisle and pew, until a flickering tongue of fire burns above every worshiper's head. Pentecost. What would happen if it happened right now and right here? There are some who have been praying for Pentecost for a long time. I know. I have met them. Two young adults were in my church office sharing their earnest longing for it to happen again. And why not here, they wondered. Shall I tell them it can't happen yet? This isn't the right time. We aren't the right generation for Pentecost. And besides, what would it look like? The answer lies in the Greek word Pentecost day which means fifth day. Add 50 days to pa Passover, and you get Pentecost. Both symbolic holy days were predicated on a solitary divine passion. From the gates of Eden to the cross of Christ, even to this very day, every act of God without sex exception has been driven by his passionate love for fallen human sinners. Bethlehem, Calvary, Pentecost, all because of his crimson passion. And so, when you pray for Pentecost, you're asking for more than simply to be filled with God's Spirit. You are, in fact, pleading for the infilling of God's fiery passion for lost people. For how could you be filled with the Spirit of God if you were not filled with the passion of God? This concludes our reading today of God's dream for you, the Chosen.